know, and while I was backsliding. So, I mean, in my heart, I, I, because I wasn't seeking or was because I wasn't like getting that attention or that affection, I felt like, oh, I should do that. Cause like, that's a typical bully move. That's a typical like move to do is like when something's wrong with you, you have to go and do that on others, you know? Welcome back to the Light It Up podcast. I am your host, Wyatt Taylor. With us today, we have Gabriel Hazard. He is from the West Las Vegas Pastor's House, Pastor Scott Lamb's church with Assistant Pastor Looney. Be sure to check out their YouTube channel, the West Las Vegas Potter's House, and their app should be WLVPH. Um, but they have amazing ministry there and very great sermons there that we recommend you listen to. Um, Today we are going to be talking about judging others and the righteous judge. So these are two separate subjects, but they kind of go under the same uh, subject or whatever you would call it. Um, So number one, we're going to be talking about how we judge others as humans um, and how we should righteously judge others and how we should if we should even judge others at times um, and the effects from judging others and how it makes other people feel. Secondly, we're going to be talking about why God is the ultimate judge. So why is God the judge who judges between heaven and hell? Why is there in heaven and hell and such? But we also wanted to assure you guys that we got a lot of our our facts and our details and um, a lot of this information from actual books written by actual pastors and ministers. Um, For example, Mir Safardi. So these people you can trust and you can trust us. We are conveying what they have said. So we do want to let you guys know that it isn't a few teenagers making up doctrine. But we did want to assure you guys that this is sound doctrine. Um, in the eyes of pastors we see as um, great pastors. But anyway, without further ado, here is episode five of the Light It Up podcast. We thank you for being here. We hope you enjoy. All right, Gabriel, why don't you give us a quick testimony of how you came to Christ? All right. Uh, hello, my name's Gabriel. So, um, you know, as, as a, I was born here in Las Vegas, I go to the West Las Vegas Potter's House Church. And so as as a kid, I was born into the church and I'm going to just skip a couple of years around the age of like nine to 10. Uh, you know, I was, I was on fire for Christ. I was doing as much like that I could um, as a, a little kid, you know, and I was trying to just be very involved upon the church. But then uh, we can, I was talking to my parents and we, we convinced pastor, my pastor, uh, if we could maybe give me a little exception on getting baptized or a couple, like a, like a year or two early. And he he accepted it because he saw how involved and how how dedicated I was to upon to like upon the church and so he 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 was proud he was proud and he was happy and so he was like yeah sure you could get baptized but you need to be serious about this and I I was and so I got baptized but then the, after I got baptized I was you know after I got dried off and everything I went back to my grandparents and they told me listen you're gonna now that you made this decision the devil's gonna hate this and it's 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 going to be a challenge. He's going to throw some te- some type of attack towards your way and you're just going to need to fight fight it back with God though. And I I was I was like, "Okay, I like I didn't know, but I was I was ready, you know." And uh maybe like a month after I got baptized, my biological dad uh had came back uh but he it was he he came back very aggressive. He he wanted to get custody part-time cu- custody of me. But um, instead of just talking to my mom, seeing if he could get me a couple of days of the week, he decided to go to court about it and be very aggressive, which which, of course, he chose the days that were time like days for me to go to church, you know. And so after that, it, it was it really messed it messed with me. And trust me, if you have if you stop listening to the word of God sur- and surrounding yourself with the people that are men or women of God, it's, it's really going to ruin your faith and it's going to ruin you really. So, um, after like, 
after he did that, I, I started to backslide, unfortunately. And when I started backsliding, I went, I went down this path of trying to find relationships with girls at my school. And it was now that I think like now that I think about it, it was very stupid, but I thought I was cool, you know, and I thought that's how I could find like acceptance or whatever, you know. And so I was going to different girls, like trying to talk to them or whatever, you know, and it, it was it was dumb. But then after some prayer from my grandparents and some other people and a, like the congregation prayed for me, um, I, I, I this attack from the devil was pushed off and my dad just disappeared out of nowhere he nowhere to be found nothing and then he like so all that court stuff it stopped so my mom got full custody of me and because of her schedule it worked out perfectly for me to be able to go to church with my grandparents again and obviously switching back to that transition like er, that that time where you go and you you go to church and stuff like that it's it's harder but after a while I got I I you know, I was used to it, and then I there was I, I don't know what the sermon was, but it was something where it got my mind thinking, and then I felt convicted. You know, and I felt this spirit t- telling me like, you you know what you were doing was wrong. You know you're not right. Like you need you need to truly give me your life. And so I was like, all right. So I went I went to the altar and I gave my life to Christ. And I'm telling you, ever since that day, my life has been like oh my gosh it the miracles that have been performed are, are just amazing and god has like he has never let me down ever and he's always shown me love show me what i needed and he's he spoke to me when i needed it and so if if you're not saved i i recommend you get saved that's awesome man that was a great testimony um so moving right along, we are going to be talking about uh, judging righteously. So Gabriel had mentioned that this pertained to his um, testimony a bit, uh, judging people and judging others. So we are going to be talking about how we judge people and how um, to not judge people and to judge righteously. So uh, the reference to this is John seven twenty four. Gabriel's going to read that to us real quick, and then we are going to ask questions and talk about it. Uh, Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. Okay, so um, kind of the first uh, thing or first portion of that is judging righteously. So what does it mean to judge righteously? So... Um, I wanted to ask Gabriel, uh, in your experience, how and why did you judge people? Like, why, why was it, what was the reason behind that? And what was your kind of motive? Okay. So, um, I judging people, it came just naturally, you know, cause as a, per, as a person, as you go on, you judge people, but as you grow in faith, you have to judge people the correct way. And that's what it means, like judge righteously. And that's it. It's as I, as I've grown in my faith, I've learned how to correctly judge because before I was judging, um, how do I explain it? I was just judging in this way that it was making people, uh, look like I'm, be- it was making me look better than other people. And I was lifting myself up uh, instead of them. So I'd put somebody down instead of like lifting them up or telling them, Oh, like, Hey, you look good today. I'd be like, ew, their hair looks weird, you know, or like something like that. And I'd, I'd always have, I'd always find something wrong when I was, when I was backsliding, I'd always find something wrong about somebody instead of just to, like, instead of just thinking like, Hey, this person, they look nice. They dressed up today for church instead of saying, Oh, they're not in a suit. So they're not like, they don't look good. No, I, I decided, Hey, like they actually look nice. They dressed up and stuff, you know, but just coming is really cool. But just dressing up is also cool. Yeah. Okay, so when did you start, like, judging people? Like, when you noticed you started judging other people as, like, in the church or outside of the church? Um. So I, I noticed, because obviously when I was backslidden, and I like I said, I wasn't really um, in the church. But when I transitioned back, like I was saying, that there's that, like, little blur period when you come back from 
backslidden, being backslidden and like listening to the word of God, there's that blur where it's like you hear what he's saying, but you're not taking it to heart. You're just letting it go through one ear and out the other, you know. And so I I basically just look at different people and be like, I'd always find something wrong with one person. I would never like see something good about them. I'd always find something bad about them. So that's yeah. Kind of that blur tear um, time. Yeah, so just uh, really quick, um, something I found in Scripture is, let's see, is uh, James 4.12, there is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who are you to judge another? So we will be talking about God being the righteous judge later on, but I did want to say that we honestly have no right to judge others. The reason being is because the Bible says we were all born of sin or into sin, however you want to word it, but we are all sinful. We've all sinned. So it's it's uh, like that Proverbs, you know, why are you looking at the speck in your brother's eye when there's a plank in yours? I mean, doesn't sound super logical or whatever, but it's true. I mean, it's very hypocritical to judge people uh, and very wrongly too, because uh, many factors go into this, like you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. You don't know how their life is going. And, you know, us judging really doesn't help sometimes. And we are in no place really ever to judge, but uh, judging people, I think is sometimes a way of, um, kind of uplifting ourselves. And um, I did want to say a lot of church kids, um, I've realized this, a lot of church kids are very judgmental, sometimes, many times in a good way. And reason being is because church kids have such a knowledge of good and evil because they know Sunday school, they know the Bible verses. But what I'm saying here is because of the... um, because they can see the contrast between good and evil, whereas other kids are just, they don't go to church, so they don't have really that defined, very defined line. So, for uh, for example, like, you know, that kid acts a certain way for attention because we know as church kids, we know a lot of the Bible and a lot of the factors that go into emotional health, into uh, our decisions and such. So a lot, that's, one of the main reasons why many church kids are judgment. So I just wanted to add that just kind of to, that's what this subject judging righteously is about, just judging others and um, kind of the whole thing behind that and how we should correctly judge others. Um, so another question I had for you, Gabe, is like personally, Was there actually something else going on in your heart that made you want to judge others? Uh, Like emotionally, not necessarily anything going on in your life, but was there something emotional going on that made you um, judgmental towards other people? Um, I I believe so. Yeah. Because I mean, uh, I, I felt obviously, like I was saying, I was looking in relationships. I was looking into, um like relationships and stuff like that because I was trying to seek love or like just that attention that affection you know and while I was backsliding so I mean in my heart I I because I wasn't seeking or what because I wasn't like getting that attention or that affection I felt like oh I should do that because like that's a typical bully move that's a typical like move to do is like when something's wrong with you you have to go and do that on others you know Yeah, that's hundred percent a bully move. <laughs> Cause uh, yeah, that's true, hundred percent. Um, then for another question is, how do I phrase it? Like, it says, "Do not judge others according to the appearance, but judge with righteousness." So, how can we tell the difference? between judging righteousness and like just judging regularly uh like sinfully i guess that would be um i I think to differentiate those uh judging righteously is judging like like that scripture was said um not like 
because obviously people like to judge when there's a speck in their eye, they like to judge, like, I mean, a log in their eye, but there's a speck in theirs, like, in the others. Um, that's, that's how you differentiate it, because, like, judging righteously, you've, you've passed that sin, and you're, you're not necessarily judging them. It's, I feel like, as when, when the Bible states judgment, and it's saying, like, uh, judge righteously, it's not really saying, like, how we, how we process the thought of judgment is, like, oh, we go, and, like, what's the word um basically you know just judge and the righteous way to do that is look at them and be like they're not they're not right they're not like what they're doing it's not leading them to the right path so we should we should help guide them as to we're like just judging the sinful way would be like judging like oh this person doesn't look good this person smells this person this this person that you know when righteously judging is judging for a sin that they're making because you know the the um the thing where it says uh judge or hate the sin not the sinner that that kind of relates to that you know because you want to hate you it's the sin that you want to hate it's the sin that you want to judge it's not it's not the sinner even though yes they have made those decisions it's you don't want to make you don't want to make that them that person because of that for mistakes they're making yeah um and in many ways, I think righteously judging can be really tossed around. Um, but from a human standpoint, from a human standpoint, I think because, uh, man, like pretty much like you said, hate the sin, not the sinner. But there has to be some sort of judge in the world that is not God for practical reasons, sometimes many times for spiritual reasons. Uh if a person commits a crime, they have to be judged, right? Did you guys have anything you wanted to add to that? Well, I, I liked how you're saying, like, many times there comes a time where we have to spiritually ju- or, like, there has to be a human spiritually judging. Um, that comes that comes to our pastors, you know, because our pastors are the people that know the most and that are the most forgiving. If we were to go to talk to another saint, we obviously, w- we will never know if another saint is playing the church game or not so but our pastors you can you could tell just by the words they speak behind that pulpit if they're saved or not you could tell whether it's whether it's a relationship with christ or if it's just fake religion you know so i I like that you said that because i mean our pastors are the top the top people when you when it comes to spiritual uh things like i think your pastor is the best person to talk to about things like that okay so moving along we are going to be talking about our second and final subject of the day but this one is very very it's a very extensive subject and it's something that's real it's a really um it's a hard thing to talk about honestly and many of the thoughts i have come up with are from commentaries from pastors and actual things so i did want to say that because it is a very difficult to talk about so why is god the ultimate judge this is very crucial and this is a very hard topic to talk about because a loving god and an eternal hell and a righteous judge to many people that that doesn't fit in the same sentence so we're going to be talking about that um but first i want Raphael to read micah 7 18. okay who is god like you pottering the equity equity my bad iniquity and passing over the transgression of the remaining remaining of his heritage he does not remain wait he does not remain his angle forever because he delights in mercy. Okay. So this is another picture of the loving God. And also Romans 6, 23 wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So thing is, is God is righteous. Number one, he is a righteous judge he's a fair judge okay so the reason he is a fair judge is because god is separate from sin god is not a part of sin he is something separate he is a righteous person so so i'm going to read to you 
Let's see. Uh, give me one second. Okay. Hold on. Okay, never mind. It's uh, Matthew or Micah 7, 18 that actually says, He does not retain his anger forever, but he delights in mercy, along many other scriptures stating that God is a loving God. There's many things in scripture um, that all points to that. So because of that, because God is outside of sin, he is the only one that can judge sin, right? Man yeah. is born into sin. Um, we are all sinful. So God is the only righteous judge because he has not sinned. And, you know, that it's a hard subject to talk about, honestly, because what we're talking about is heaven and hell, right? And I do want to say that hell is a real place. Hell is something real that is referenced many times in scripture. You can look it up, but I have one scripture that says um, kind of simple, but Psalms 917, the wicked shall be turned into hell and then all nations that forget and all the nations that forget God. So hell is a real thing as referenced in Psalms, but there are other scriptures. I don't have them right now, but I know there are. So just uh, Jesus actually references many like uh, into the fiery furnace, uh, internal punishment and such, right? So, you know, sin is in. Sin is the same. So, um, you know, uh, many times when in in our um, in our earth, whatever, it, uh, um, kind of a felony, and then there's a minority, um, both have different punishments. But here's the thing. So all sin is sin to God because God is righteous. He is pure, right? So no matter what it is, it's all sin. I mean, it's all the same thing. We're all doing wrong things. We're all pretty much not obeying God, all sin, whether big or small. So God takes all of this into account, and he fairly judges you. He sees all, and I will read to you, Job 34, 21, for his eyes are on the ways of man, and he sees all his steps. God sees everything. He knows everything that happens, so he can rightfully just you, like, you know, like, God, what about that one time I did that? He sees everything. He's taking everything into account. And he is a just judge, right? So he is able to rightfully, accordingly, kind of give you the business depending on what you've done, which it's two choices because sin is sin. So with all of that being said, with the reality of God judging people, um, with the reality of uh, God being a judge, and with the reality of heaven and hell, I do want to add some hope to this because I'm not, I'm not trying to just be as super – sad guy, you know, all this. So I wanted to say God is a righteous and very forgiving judge, right? Yes, yes. God forgives all sin and he pardons all sin. John, First John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Um, there is only one lawgiver, James or well, James four twelve. I, I said that already. But there is one lawgiver who is able to save and destroy. Who are you to judge another? And you know, God is God's a forgiving God. It's it's pretty simple, honestly. Because He has to judge, He offers a way out. Unlike the judges we have today, which many times guys have to or girls, criminals in general, have to serve time or do whatever they need to do because of their actions. But God is different. God is very different. He's faithful and just to forgive. First John 1 John 1.9. But he has pardoned your sin already because he has paid the price through Christ. Uh, Romans 6.23. Uh, Jesus paid the price for, for sin, and that is God's way out of judgment. Um, another way of saying that is that is God's way of getting us into heaven and spending eternal life with him. So because, because of this forgiveness factor, that is another reason, reason why God is a judge, is faithful and just to forgive. And along with that, 
because he is forgiving. That is why he is the ultimate judge. That is why he is able to judge everybody. That's why he has been appointed to that role. He forgives sins. He forgives everybody. He forgives everybody. You have to confess with your mouth and ask God for forgiveness of sins. But God in an instant would forgive your sins. That is why he is the judge, because he can pardon sin, and he is the most fair judge of them all. He is the spiritual judge, but whether or not you accept the price that has been paid is your choice, free will, as God offers us. But your price, because wages of sin is death, has to be paid somehow, whether that means hell, unfortunately, or whether that means accepting the death that Jesus Christ has already died. And I want to add, I know this is a lot, but it's a very extensive subject and something a lot of people don't understand because how can a loving God send people to hell? Well, another thing that sometimes comes up is why can't God just end the world? Why can't he just, you know, make make heaven and make everything right again? The thing is, is he is. God is. God, in Revelation, the whole book of Revelation has set up the end of the world. He has set up how things are going to go, how the world is going to end, in which at the end he makes the heaven or the earth a new heaven, right? He creates a new heaven for people who have accepted him. The reason being for this whole time of judgment is God's judgment, righteous judgment on the people of the earth that haven't accepted him after the rapture of his saints, of people who have accepted Christ. Um, there's a scripture, I, I don't have it on me, but it's in First Thessalonians about Jesus coming back to bring us back into heaven to bring his uh, saints and whatnot. But God, after he's taken uh, all the Christians out of this world, he's going to judge the world for seven years. Reason why God is not is not just ending the world right there is because he is a very patient and a very righteous God. He has this seven years allotted because he knows souls are going to be saved through the chaos. That is why he doesn't end the world now. That's why he's ending it later. He is going to have um, a revival. He is going to then have just a, peer, a long period, seven years of destruction, seven years of chaos. That is going to lead people to Christ. And that is therefore why he doesn't end it now because he is waiting for more souls to get saved, which connects us to being witnesses and to being open about the gospel and saving as many souls as we can. Uh, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I want to say a couple of things. So uh, another one thing about what you said um, is that God is a very patient God and he is very righteous. And I actually, I really, I really like that you specified that. And people say, why, why, why did he let sin be a thing? Well, it's because he wants us to have free will. We want to do our own thing, okay? But he's 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 given us information and and, and right. evidence that if that he is coming at an unknown hour. That's why you want to say right because he's not going to give you a specific day and time. And you, you could be like, oh, I'm gonna do whatever I want until that exact day. So then I'm gonna just go and repent. No, he's saying he's gonna come at an unknown hour. When you least expect it, so you you have to be ready. You have to you have to be ready to fight fight that battle with the devil because he's going to continue to fight. He's going to continue to attack you with mental games or you know whatever. And you just have to be ready. But also, I I also liked how you said uh you have to when you like repent, you have to speak it out because uh actually we're having revival here at the at West Las Vegas Potter's house right now with Ernie Toppin and Tuesday night he 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 was speaking about the power of the tongue. And something that's mm. very powerful with the tongue is you have to speak it out into existence, you know, because if you say it in your right. mind, yeah, you're mm -hmm. saying it, but nobody else around you can hear that. Nobody else will know what you're speaking. So you have to speak it out into existence. And a lot of the time, maybe you're not going to see it be moved right then and there, but God is moving and you just have to be ready and you have to understand that he is he 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 does ha take his time sometimes, but it's he has a plan. and He has a reason for it. 100 percent that's god is just amazing how much he he he's uh just so like merciful towards us because yeah there's many judges they'll like 
they heal one thing and they'll be like, oh, time they send them to jail or put them in prison, lock them up forever. Yep. There's many no people. No mercy. Yep. No mercy at all. And there's a lot of people in prison that's in for something they didn't do. And there was no mercy mm. given to them for that. And the thing is, even if they, let's say these prisoners do own up to what they did, they know they're wrong and they grown from it. They still going to have to solve that time. They're still going to go through it. Even sometimes, even with God, sometimes we're going to pray that God's going to help us. There's a balance. There's there maybe times God is merciful and gives you this, this, um, lets you like scot free. Every time, sometimes you're going to have to go through it for you to learn from your mistakes. And uh, either way is, it's not saying that sometimes God wants us, wants some people to go through it and some people don't. No, he's, I don't know what God thinks, but the thing is, he's merciful. He loves us so much. Even in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever yes, sir. Is, I'm That's it. Uh, everlasting That's life. It. That's why what you're going to watch why he hasn't in the world because he loves us he wants to see us in heaven he because he made us in his image we're made in his likeness and his image that's why so many of us have mores with uh or personalities and all that like from right and wrong good chunk of a right and wrong is from god and this world is trying to take that away from us, trying to take us saying, oh, it's OK to do this. There's nothing wrong with that when this when it's completely wrong. Even back then, they were new. There was a whole bunch of things that was right with God that were correct, that were morally correct. But now times has changed and they're going to a different way. Yeah. Um, um, so just something a little about like about that to kind of p- push off of John three sixteen. You know, God is a merciful God because He gave His only begotten Son. The first word, the first couple of words from that scripture, He gave His only begotten Son. And he's saying that He gave His only Son to die for us. He that's I don't know about you, but that is like that that's <laughs> m- mercy, man. Like He's right. He's 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 being very nice and kind to us, like and. A lot of people just treat him like he's nobody, but he literally gave his son. Many people on this earth would never do that. They would never give something of theirs to help m- many other people, you know. And that's just that's, that's so just true. something. That's just something that's so cool because that's God. God gave his only son to die for us. Like he didn't have to. He doesn't even have to tell us <laughs> like he's coming back. It could just be us. Like oh, you know, I do want to serve it. This is kind of different from other things. You know, I do want to be a Christian, Pentecostal Christian though. And he, but we that's the thing. He he told us he's coming back, you know. I mean I just had to throw out the Pentecostal because there's there's many Christians, but Pentecostal there's a key word cost in, in there, you know? And you have to give mm. God gave his son up. He he gave something that cost him to give for others. That's 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 Pentecostal it cost is in it because that's what it means. You have to give something, whether it be in ministries, you have to give your time, you have to give like a, a lot of your like your mind your, like your sleeping faith. hours like yes your faith thank you you have to do a lot of that so that's that's why it's it's so hard with nowadays where you where everybody wants to be accepted and because everybody's living in fear so they want they're like i want to be accepted i want to do this but listen you have to give up something you know and it, that's why you want to be a pentecostal christian now you know it's Pentecostal is like I said, it's cost. You gotta, it's gonna, something's gonna happen, but it's it's good. It's always, you trust me, it's always gonna be good. And when you go to heaven, and you're gonna see that, you're gonna see the the amazing things that God has in heaven, and you just have to, you have to open up your eyes and see, you know. Um, yeah, definitely, uh, heaven is definitely something to look forward to. But um, you know, something else I've read, um pertaining to sin i know we're talking about the righteous judge but something pertaining to sin as why sin is in the world and all of this like it's not my fault i'm sinning you know but in fact it is it is you know we have um we have free will either to serve god or to serve the world 
um, straight and narrow is the pathway to heaven or something. I'm, I'm paraphrasing it, but you know, um, uh, you know, sin, I think I've thought a lot about this before because it's just, it has many people appalled, like why sin? You know, it's, it's a shower can't... thought. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Totally dude. Um, it's like, why can't there just be no sin? And I've given it some thought. And as you said, the cost uh, of being a Christian, um, I, I mentioned earlier that the price will have to be paid at some point. Uh, death, wages of sin is death. The price will have to be paid at some point. You know, people say like, why did he make a tree of good and evil? I read a commentary on it saying that um, they had scriptural references. I, I can't quote them now. I know it sounds super sketchy, but they did mention that this could have been a simple test of faith. Would these, would Adam and Eve give themselves to God or would they give themselves to the world? And Satan had a lot of involvement with that. And it's pretty much a picture of the daily life of a Christian. Satan is constantly, I mean, he's on your butt all the time, man. It's pretty horrible. But with God, we have that strength. And I heard from a sermon before, I'm going somewhere with this, guys. With with this sin, um, they tried to cover it up, right? They tried to themselves pay the price by getting leaves, covering themselves with fig leaves when the Lord, you know, it's like the Lord showed up to them, like, where are you, um, Adam? Not paraphrased, but um, it's they covered themselves with fig leaves because they tried to pay the price for sin, quote unquote, right? But then God comes, comes in, uh, forgives their sin. And he judges them, judges them accordingly, and he judges Satan. But... Um, what happens next is a very great picture of what Jesus did for us. He sacrificed a lamb or a lion or whatever. He sacrificed an animal. That was the first um, ever, the first thing that was ever killed in, in the world. He sacrificed. He killed an animal and covered them with the skin from that animal. Right. So God forgive their sin and forgive their tresp uh, trespasses, whatever. Um, but he forgave them and he covered them. So although they failed, this pertains right back to God being a very merciful judge. God covered them immediately. He, I mean, the, the, come on, these guys literally brought sin into the world. I mean, God's like, come on, man, you just, you just ruined my perfect world. I, I spent seven days creating this thing, you know? It's like, come on, you're really just going to do that? But no, God judges them. Like, okay, this is what's going to happen now. Some things are going to change because sin has been entered into the world, but I forgive you, and I cover you, I clothe you, and you no longer have to live in sin. That is the exact same picture as with God, with Jesus, Jesus being the sacrificial, um, the sacrificial, I don't want to say item, but the sacrificial um, thing to cover our sin. 100%. That's, that's amazing. I even uh, for it, backs, it backs up the fact that the only way to get rid of sin is death. For the wages of sin is death. And Jesus mm -hmm. Christ took that death penalty. He took that wage of death for us that, that we're able to make heaven a home, flat out. Be able to have a relationship with him, be able to follow him and be covered by Jesus. And that's the only way to be able to truly do that is give me life to Jesus, basically. <laughs> Put it on to call only. Yep. So, <laughs> yes, kind, of, kind, of, kind of going back to what, like, kind of what I was saying earlier about how God literally gave his only son, like, to die for us. But it's like, it's not that, like, he, he gave him and, like, he died, like, oh, he got shot or he got stabbed or whatever, you know, like, not something that, like, a typical death, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, that's like that's just like kind of what kids in line, but uh, it's not like he he just like something like that happened. He 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 suffered this like how, how do I explain it? He basically suffered and like they threw things at him. They beat him. They they like tore apart his his back. You know, he literally got nails in his arms and his legs. Like 
like he suffered and then he died like it's not like it's just easier to say he died but he he suffered then he died now i i don't uh, personally i mean i i love i love people right but i'm sorry so i don't i don't know if i want to suffer but that's what god did that he literally sent his son to suffer and die for something that we had done so, uh, something bad that we done that we've done and we've been told that it's bad but we still do it and he died for us just because of that are we uh are we good anything you guys wanted to add to that i guess we're good we could just put an altar call i guess you okay. want to close it in yep okay uh thank you everyone for joining us for this episode a special thanks to gabriel hazard one of the guys with the coolest last names ever um we thank Amen you for being that, on this brother. podcast <laughs> um we thank you for being on this podcast uh I encourage you to go check out Pastor Scott Lamb's The Las Vegas, West Las Vegas Potter's House, the YouTube channel. They have Instagram and and all that stuff. Yeah. They have a website. Go check it out. They've got some pretty amazing, I might add, uh, sermons there. Um, You'll definitely have a lot of um, fun watching that and uh, enjoying that. But nonetheless, we thank you for being here. Uh, God bless. Hello again. I ask you stay for a couple more minutes and listen to the words I speak. As we went through this podcast, we talked about judgment. We talked about judging righteously and why God is the ultimate judge. Now, I'm not going to act like I'm perfect. And I I have never judged unrighteously before because I have. And because in in the Bible, in Romans 3.23, it says for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I believe you have done this too. Now, I want I want you to understand that no matter what, Jesus still loves you, and this is proven because he died for you on the cross. Romans 5:8 says, "But God demonstrates his own love towards us. In that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us." Now, if you want to accept Jesus in, into your life, repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I know you died on the cross for my sins and all my transgressions. I pray that you help me change my life to better follow your word and to judge under you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.